Hello and welcome to Faith Walk. Several years ago, I was reading Christian author Max Lucado in one of his early works entitled God Came Near, and early on in the introductory portion of that book, I ran across this quote that has always stuck with me as being something pretty powerful to think about. These words were written in the inscription, Christianity in its purest form is nothing more than seeing Jesus. Christian service, in its purest form, is nothing more than imitating him who we see. To see his majesty and to imitate him, this is the sum of Christianity. I think those are some amazing words. To see Jesus in all of his majesty and to imitate him in that majesty is the sum of Christianity. Of course, thinking about the majesty of Jesus, there are a number of times in Scripture where Jesus demonstrates the power of God and the magnificence of God. One such scene that is rather unusual is found in Matthew chapter 17, and I'd like to share that with us to think about today. In Matthew 17, beginning in verse 1, Matthew writes these words, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. It was a magnificent moment, one that seems very strange even for our 21st century eyes to read and to try to consider. Jesus takes three of his closest friends, his three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, up on a mountain. And while they are there, something marvelous happens. Jesus' whole form changes. He is literally transfigured. His clothes are shining and bright as the light. His face shines like the sun. And there appears with him Moses and Elijah. Now, it's an odd thing to even try to consider how did the disciples recognize who it was that was standing there with Jesus? How did they know Moses and Elijah by appearance? And yet it is very clear that there's something significant happening here. Jesus is meeting with Moses, who represents the law of God, and Elijah, who is a representative of the prophets of God. And Jesus is there with representatives of the law and the prophets when a voice from heaven says, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. It is a way of God demonstrating that the voice of his son Jesus is now superior to anything that has come before in the law and in the prophets. It's also interesting that the words from the voice that comes from heaven are the very same as those words that were spoken when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. What's added on this occasion, of course, is listen to him. He is going to be speaking. His words are going to fulfill the law and the prophets. So pay close attention to the things he has to say. A powerful moment. Peter is stunned, as are the other disciples. The text says that they are fearful and fall on their faces. Peter, as always, feels the need to say something. And he says something that to me seems very strange. He says, Lord, do you want me to build three shelters? I'll build one for you. I'll build one for Moses. And I'll build one for Elijah. Although he may not have completely understood what was happening, Peter knew that this was a marvelous moment, a mountaintop experience, literally, that he didn't want to end. Why not build a shelter? Why not camp out here on the mountain? Why not continue to bask in the glory of Jesus? 
And yet, it is very clear when we read on from this text that Jesus insists that they must go down the mountain to the valley below where the world is still hurting, where there are still needs to be met, where there are still those to be taught who have never heard about Jesus before. So there is still work to be done. Yet, these disciples saw the majesty of Jesus. I've often wondered, how did they describe that? Is it a moment they never forgot? Well, you can turn in your Bibles all the way near the end of the New Testament, near the end of Peter's life, and Peter writes a couple of letters at the end of the New Testament, named appropriately 1st and 2nd Peter. I'd like to direct your attention to something Peter writes near the end of his life, many years after the transfiguration of Jesus that we've just read about in Matthew 17. Peter writes these words in 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 16. He says, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, notice this, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. I'm fascinated by the fact that even when Peter is an older man, even when he is near the end of his life, he still remembers that scene on the mountain with Jesus. He still describes it this way, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. What a marvelous description of what it means to be a Christian, to be an eyewitness of the majesty of Jesus. Is that possible for us today? Can we say the same thing? Listen again to that quote with which we started. Christianity in its purest form is nothing more than seeing Jesus. Christian service, in its purest form, is nothing more than imitating him who we see. To see his majesty and to imitate him, that is the sum of Christianity. I invite you today, let's be eyewitnesses of the majesty of Jesus. Let's open our eyes, the eyes of our hearts. Let's see him at work. Let's sense his presence his peace, his power, his love. And let's communicate that to everyone we encounter today. Would you bow with me as we pray? Father, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. Help us every single day to open the eyes of our hearts and be eyewitnesses of his majesty and his power at work in our lives. Help us to recognize it first for ourselves and then help us to use that experience to teach others, to lead them to share such experiences with us so that together we can all bask in the glory and the wonder and the majesty of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. And we pray, Father, that our hearts may be constantly devoted to you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us today.